There's a paradox in obesity. Let's say I carry a lot of excess fat on my body. By definition, I'd be carrying a lot of energy with me all the time because that fat I carry is energy, right? Fat contains a lot of calories, which is energy. So with all this extra energy, you would assume that I would feel quite energetic, wouldn't you? That I would feel like being active because I have so much extra energy. Though so as we know, the opposite is true. Overweight people experience fatigue and decreased physical endurance and even increased hunger. These are not symptoms of excess energy, but rather the opposite. They are symptoms of low energy. If your body is running low on energy, you feel hungry and tired. Right? But how could your body be running low on energy if you have a lot of stored energy and you provide a lot of energy via your diet? Think of it like this. A battery can carry a lot of energy, though that energy isn't very useful to you unless you plug it into a device that knows how to use that energy. Right? Well, that device within your body is what we call the mitochondria. And it actually takes fat and carbs and produces energy the body can actually use and burn off. It's your body's energy production. Though if your energy production isn't working well, if you can't effectively turn fat and carbs into energy your body can spend, you may end up carrying excess fat while still running low on energy. Eat less and move more is what we're told to do, though that's actually one of the worst things you can do if you're running low on energy. So what should you do instead? Let's take a look. First, let me just say welcome back to my channel. In case you don't know me, I'm Ingen, a Norwegian Viking currently living in Portugal. I did my master's in physics and mathematics back in the day, though I found that my real passion is in researching nutrition science and really how to live our best life. So I'm here to share with you what I know and what I learned along the way. Click that subscribe button to follow along. And now let's take a deeper look into the obesity paradox. Why people who carry excess fat are actually running low on energy and what to do about it. If they are running low on energy, should they eat more? Not exactly. I mean, that's how we gain excess fat in the first place, right? We consume more calories than our body spends or burns off, which means we have an energy surplus. We actually have too much energy or more energy than our body needs. And that's why you'd think we'd feel especially energetic, right? Because our body has all this extra energy it could spend if it wanted to. And you'd think we'd feel less hungry as well because we're actually consuming more food than our body needs. So how come it the opposite. How come overweight people actually instead feel less energetic and more hungry? Well, as we just talked about, even though they have all these extra energy within their body, they may actually be running low on energy. And why is this such a big deal? Because if this is happening to you and we can actually fix what's causing you to have low energy, even though you're carrying all this extra energy, you may feel more energetic naturally because your body is producing more energy, have fewer cravings naturally because you're not constantly running low on energy, and you may lose weight naturally and more easily because your body is able to use the energy it has more efficiently. Sounds good? Okay then, let's take a look at why your body may be running low on energy. Because if we want to fix it, we need to understand what's causing it. And to do that, we need to look at what the mitochondria does within our body. Don't worry, I'll explain it as simply as possible. Within your cells, there's something called the mitochondria. And what it does is that it takes fat and carbs and produces a type of energy called ATP. Remember, you have fat and carbs within your body, mostly fat, but also some carbs. And even though fat and carbs contain energy, if we want to use that energy, we first need the mitochondria to convert that energy into ATP. This is what we may call our body's energy production. The mitochondria produces energy our body can actually use or spend or burn off. Without the mitochondria, our body wouldn't be able to burn any energy at all. So what I mean when I say we're running low on energy, even though we're carrying a lot of excess fat on our body, is that we're running low on ATP, the type of energy our body can actually burn. Basically, your mitochondria isn't producing enough ATP. So the question is then, what may cause the mitochondria to produce less energy. Because remember, if the mitochondria isn't producing enough energy, it means you'll burn fewer calories. You'll be more likely to store fat while at the same time feel hungrier and tired more easily. Of course, this means you'll be more likely to gain weight and it will be more difficult to lose weight. So what may cause the mitochondria to produce less energy? Well, for one, the mitochondria needs specific vitamins in order to do its job. Take a look at this illustration 
illustration right here, which is an illustration of part of the mitochondria. I know it looks complicated and we are not going to go into detail here, so just take a look at the different vitamins that are marked. The mitochondria needs vitamins in order to produce ATP for us. So if it's missing certain vitamins, it may not produce as much ATP. And where do these vitamins come from? your diet. Now know that when we hear the word vitamins, we're trained to think of vegetables. Though that's really not where you get most of your vitamins from. Even though vegetables may contain quite a bit of certain vitamins, they are usually not as bioavailable, meaning our body can't digest and absorb as much of them. So even though they may contain quite a bit of vitamins, not a lot of them are actually useful to our body. So where can we find vitamins that are more easily absorbed and useful to our body? In animal foods. For example, beef, other meats, seafood, dairy, eggs. The point here is that we need to make sure we provide our mitochondria with enough vitamins to produce energy. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with a friend, it all helps support me. And for lots more tips, follow me on Instagram at vikingingen. Also, I have this brand new setup here. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now, just imagine that you have these fat and carb molecules that come knocking on the door of the mitochondria. The mitochondria can then decide whether it wants to welcome them in and use them to produce energy, or if they should instead be sent to our fat storage room to be stored as fat. Now, this decision is of course influenced by how much energy we already have. If we have a lot of energy produced already, if the battery is already full, uh, the mitochondria may decide to send them to the storage room. So if we're running low on energy, the mitochondria should decide to use them to produce more energy. This decision, however, is dependent on a specific type of enzyme within the mitochondria. And what can happen is that something may inhibit this enzyme from working the way it should, which can then lead to more fat and carbs being sent to the storage room even if we're running low on energy. Now, your body is very smart and normally it's very good at balancing out energy. So if you're running low on energy and there's fat or carbs available to produce energy, it will produce more. If you're running low on energy and there's not much fat and carbs easily available to produce more energy, it will signal to you to eat more food. You will feel hungry. And if it's still running low on energy, it will signal to you to spend less energy by making you feel tired. It's beautiful. The body knows exactly what it's doing and it's doing all of this without you even needing to give it a single thought. The problem is when things don't work the way they should, which can happen, like I said, if something inhibits this enzyme within your mitochondria from do doing its job, which can mean that more fat is sent to storage even if you're running low on ATP. And because you're running low on ATP and you're not able to produce much more energy, your body asks you for a top up by making you feel hungry, even though you may have already eaten a lot of food. And technically, according to the calories in calories out theory, you shouldn't need to provide any more food. Though because the mitochondria keeps sending fat to the storage room instead of producing more energy, the body is running low on energy and asks you to provide more raw materials in order to make more energy so you feel hungry. Which doesn't exactly help that much because the, your body still sends most of it to the storage room. So you keep feeling hungry and you keep eating and the body keeps sending so much of it to the storage room. And because your body is constantly running low on energy, you also feel tired more easily. What a vicious cycle, huh? The question then becomes, what is it that may cause the inhibition of that enzyme within the mitochondria? Because if we know what's causing all of this, we may be able to fix it, right? That's the whole point to be able to fix the cause so that our mitochondria can finally produce the energy it should, so that we can fill up on energy, actually use the energy we consume, and not store more than we should. Now, there are different factors that affect this mechanism. This paper talks about how low-grade inflammation can lead to the inhibition of that enzyme. Now, I won't go much into detail here, I don't want to get too technical on you, though it's well known that carrying a lot of excess fat usually comes along with low-grade inflammation within the body. Now, it's usually thought that the inflammation is a kind of side effect or a symptom of have carrying excess fat, that the excess fat is causing the inflammation. So what if it's the other way around? What if the inflammation is causing you to gain excess fat? And that's what this paper talks about. Now, I may talk more about what actually happens here in a future video. Though for now, let's just say that 
very simplified. The inflammation response within our body may cause the inhibition of the enzyme within the mitochondria, leading us to store more fat than we normally would and that we should. So then the question becomes, what may cause us to have low-grade inflammation within our body? And there are quite a few possibilities, including from the environment in case you're living more like a modern lifestyle. I'll have to talk more about that in a future video, so stay tuned. Low-grade inflammation is also connected to your gut. There are bacteria living in your gut that, when they die, produce a toxin that can cause inflammation within your body if they are absorbed or if this toxin is absorbed into your bloodstream. We all have these bacteria, though some have more of them, and for some people, they may be more likely to be absorbed into the bloodstream. Okay, again, I'll have to talk more about this in an upcoming video, because I don't want to overwhelm you with all these mechanisms. Though the one common thread throughout all of this, the one factor that affects it all, is your diet. It's not only about getting all the vitamins that your body needs, it's also about getting all the other nutrients your body needs. For example, the energy production also requires amino acids or protein. It's also about avoiding foods that may cause inflammation within our body, including oxidative stress within our mitochondria, which can also affect our precious enzyme. And it's about eating in a way that helps support our gut and the lining of our gut to keep toxins and other unwanted particles from entering into our bloodstream, causing inflammation and ultimately even leading to us us storing ex more fat. Again, the whole point of all of this is to make sure our body's energy production is working well. Because if your body isn't producing enough energy, you'll burn fewer calories while also storing more fat. And you'll likely feel more hungry and tired as well. Of course, this means you'll be more likely to gain excess fat and it will be more difficult to lose the weight as well. So we want to make sure we do what we can to support our body's energy production. When it comes to losing weight, Counting calories and exercising is what people who are already fairly slim and may already have a well-functioning energy production do in order to lose those last few pounds. And it's easier for them. So they don't understand why you think it's so difficult. Just stop eating when you hit your calories and just go running for another 30 minutes. What's the big deal? You just have to push through. Well, that's easy to say if your body isn't already running low on energy. And on top of that, you expect me to eat even less and exercise even more? By the way, if you haven't checked it out yet, you'll want to watch my video on the shocking signs of burning calories with cardio. I bet you'll be surprised to say the least. And please don't judge how I look in that video. The lighting was awful. I'll link to the video in the description of this video. Now, what we've talked about in this video right here is all super fascinating and no one's really talking about it. Again, I'll share more in upcoming videos, including practical things you can do to help support your energy production. So make sure you're subscribed and I'll recommend some videos to watch shortly. So if you're ready to put all this to use and you simply want to know step by step what to do, then check out my 90 day weight loss program called Slim by Science at slimbyscience.com. You'll find everything you need and I'll be by your side throughout the whole program. So check it out at slimbyscience.com. I'll put the link in the description of this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is really cutting edge weight loss science right here. Please share it with family and friends to help spread the word. Click the thumbs up, leave a comment. I really appreciate your support. And I'll see you in the next video for lots more fascinating stuff. And here are two videos I recommend watching next. Enjoy.